Hi guys. So I welcome you all to today's session on 5 MCQs a day series in which we are regularly covering important topics of economics and social issues and that is ESI from the perspective of RBA grade B, NABARD grade A and SEBI grade A examinations. And the topic for today is going to be Ministry of Ayush and related policy measures. So here you can take a snapshot of the relevance of this particular series as well as the different courses which you are presently running for the different competitive examinations. So for SEBI grade A this is relevant for the phase 2 and the same goes for RBA grade B which is again relevant for phase number 2 and with regard to NABAT grade A this is relevant for both phase 1 and phase 2. Now before proceeding forward let me also quickly tell you about the uh, results that we have got in the past few years. So we have started this initiative of guiding students for these competitive exams and we have been blessed with some of the very amazing results. So if we take a look at the RBA grade B 2017 exam, we have got 27 selections in the final list and in NABAT grade A 2017, there were 11 selections in the final list and in the NABAT grade A 2018, 27 of our students, they made it to the final list and out of the total generalist seats, which were only 46. And in RBA Grade B 2018, 287 plus interview calls have been received by our students and the final result of this is still awaited. So let's come back to our topic and start our discussion on Ministry of Ayush and related aspects. So let's start with the first question. Ministry of Ayush came into effect from options are 2010, 2012, 2014, 2016 or none of the above. So friends, if you talk about the Ministry of Ayush, then this Ministry of Ayush, it stands for Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Yunani, Siddha and Homeopathy. So these are the traditional systems of medicines which are covered under this definition of Ayush. So this Ministry of Ayush is basically concerned with development education and research in these traditional system of medicines which are abbreviated as Ayush. Now this particular ministry it was formed with effect from 9th of November 2014. So earlier this was not a proper ministry it was a department only. So department of Ayush it was elevated to a full fledged ministry of Ayush on 9th of November 2014. So now we can easily answer this question that the Ministry of Ayush it came into effect from option number 3 that is 2014. Next question, which of the following is a true with regard to National Commission for Indian System of Medicine Bill 2018? Options are, the bill provides for the constitution of a National Commission with four autonomous boards. The bill seeks to replace the existing regulator which is Central Council for Indian Medicine or CCIM. The bill aims at bringing reforms in the medical education of Indian systems. None of the above or all of the above. So friends if you talk about this particular bill, the Union Cabinet has recently approved this one that is National Commission for Indian System of Medicines Bill 2018. Now what does this bill do? This bill seeks to replace the existing regulator. Which is the existing regulator? Central Council for Indian Medicine. So it is to be replaced by the National Commission for Indian System of Medicine. So this particular bill, it aims at bringing reforms in the medical education of Indian systems. So if we have to, uh, so we have to revamp the education system with regard to the traditional Indian systems of medicine. And this has to be in line with the National Medical Commission and this is being proposed for the allopathy part. So for the allopathy system, we are proposing a National Medical Commission and for the Ayush part, we are proposing a National Commission for Indian System of Medicines. So this particular National Commission for Indian System of Medicines, it also aims to um, improve transparency and accountability with regard to different aspects of Indian systems of medicines. So now let's come on to the features of this particular bill. So this bill, most important one, it provides for the constitution of a national commission and there are four autonomous boards. So we have to remember that there are four autonomous boards. So what are these boards? So first is Board of Ayurveda. 
so this particular board it would be responsible for overseeing the overall education of ayurveda then there will be a board of yunani siddha and suvarikpa so this particular board is going to be responsible for overseeing the overall education of yunani siddha and suvarikpa further this bill also provides for two common boards they are board of assessment and rating and board of ethics and registration so these are the two common boards for all the traditional systems of medicine now what is going to the purpose of this particular boards board of assessment and rating this would be responsible to assess as well as grant different permissions to the educational institutions which are doing work or which wish to do work in the field of indian systems of medicine so these educational institutions they are going to be assessed and rated under this particular mechanism further the board of ethics and registration of practitioners of indian system of medicines this particular board it would be concerned with the registration part and it would also deal with the different ethical issues which relate to practicing under the national commission for indian medicine so these will be the four boards which are going to be constituted along with the national commission under this particular bill further this bill also provides for a common entrance exam as well as an exit exam which all graduates will have to clear if they wish to get practicing licenses so if they want to get a license to practice in the field of indian traditional systems of medicines then in order to uh, practice this particular system of medicine you would have to give an exit exam also in order to enter the a particular institution you would have to appear for a common entrance examination further to ensure the teaching standards the bill proposes a teachers eligibility test so this particular test will be assessing the standard of the teachers before their appointment and promotions in the traditional systems of medicines related educational institutions so friends now we have learned a lot of things about this particular national commission for indian systems of medicines bill 2018 so for, from our discussion we can easily conclude that all these statements they are correct so the answer is going to be option number 5 that is all of the above now let's move on to the next question which is incorrectly masked options are yoga day 21st june ayurveda day 5th november yunani day 11th february siddha day 18th november or option number 5 none of the above so friends if you talk about this ayush that is ayurveda yoga and naturopathy unani siddha and homeopathy so this ayush ministry it, it recently celebrated the first naturopathy day so first naturopathy day was recently celebrated with the aim of promoting drug less system of medicine to prevent diseases by altering diet and lifestyle so this particular system of naturopathy it was promoted in the recently celebrated naturopathy day now till now there was a day to celebrate all the tree, all the streams of traditional medicine except naturopathy now what is naturopathy it is a drugless system so no drugs or no medicines they are prescribed and it is very cost effective so it's a very cost effective system and no medicines are to be consumed in this one it can be easily integrated with any other system of healthcare as a lifestyle intervention so it is basically concerned with improvements in the lifestyle so these practices they are being promoted in wellness centers along with allopathic medicine so that we can get the best of the all the systems of medicine so if we talk about the different days which are celebrated for these components of ayush so the international day of yoga and i believe we all have heard about it and some of you might be aware about the day also so this is celebrated annually on june 21st since 2015 ayurveda day this is marked on 5th november every year and it was first celebrated in 2016 and in 2017 yunani day was established which is celebrated on february 11 and the declaration of january 4 as siddha day and november 18 as naturopathy day was made in january 2018 and 10th of april is observed as world homeopathy day so these are the different days which are associated with the traditional systems of indian medicine now if you try to answer this particular question then 
uh, all these statements they are correct except the option number 4 which says Siddha day is on 18th November so this is incorrect because on 18th November we celebrate the naturopathy day so now let's move on to the next question which of the following is incorrect with regard to recently held national seminar on entrepreneurship and business development in Ayurveda options are it was held in Guwahati it was organized by Ministry of Ayush in association with Niti Aayog. It aimed at encouraging entrepreneurs and Ayurveda stakeholders towards business opportunities in the sector. None of the above or all of the above. So friends, National Seminar on Entrepreneurship and Business Development in Ayurveda. It was recently held in New Delhi in November 2018. Now this particular seminar, it was organized by the Ministry of Ayush and this was organized in association with Niti Aayog and the purpose of this particular seminar it was to encourage entrepreneurs and Ayurveda stakeholders that they take up business opportunities in this particular sector. The sector is Ayurveda. The seminar aimed at developing awareness among different stakeholders about the different business opportunities which are available in this particular front. It aimed to encourage young entrepreneurs that they can use the modern technologies and they can put in modern innovations in the business development in this particular sector and they highlighted the global opportunities which are available if one works in this particular direction. Further, the Secretary of the Ministry of Ayush highlighted that the Ministry has taken up the challenge of increasing the market share of Ayurveda to threefold by the year 2022. So guys, now we can easily answer this question that the first statement which says that this national seminar on entrepreneurship and business development in Ayurveda, it was held in Guwahati. This is incorrect because this seminar was recently held in New Delhi. So now let's move on to the next question. Which of the following is our correct about International Day of Yoga? The idea of celebrating the International Yoga Day, it was pitched by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi at United Nations General Assembly in September 2014. In December 2014, UN General Assembly unanimously adopted the resolution to observe the International Day of Yoga under the agenda of UN's global health and foreign policy. The first International Yoga Day it was celebrated across the world on 21st June 2015. Options are 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 1 and 3, all of the above or none of the above. So friends, this idea of celebrating the International Yoga Day, it was first pitched by the Indian Prime Minister, Shri Narendra Modi, at United Nations General Assembly in September 2014. Then later in December 2014, UN General Assembly unanimously passed a resolution to observe 21st June as International Day of Yoga. So this particular resolution, it was adopted under the agenda of UN's Global Health and Foreign Policy. And why this date, 21st June, it was selected? This was because it represents one of the two solstices. And it is one of the longest days in Northern Hemisphere, summer solstice, which has special significance in many parts of the world. So solstices, they are the days on which the sun stands still. And these are the longest day for the Northern Hemisphere. And for the Southern Hemisphere, the things are opposite. They are the shortest day and the longest night is there. So this particular day has special significance in many parts of the world. And that's why this 21st June, it was selected. And the first International Day of Yoga, it was celebrated across the world on 21st of June 2015. So guys, now we can easily answer this question that all of these statements which are given with regard to the International Yoga Day, these statements, all of these, they are correct. So the answer is going to be option number 4. So guys, this was all about our discussion for today. If you have any query, you can drop us a mail at hello at the rate edutap.co.in or if you want to know more about our courses, you can visit our website at www.edutap.co.in or in case of any query, you want to get into touch with us personally, you can call us at 8146-207-241. So friends, if you enjoyed watching this video, please like the same Share it with your friends and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
and in case you wish to get regular updates from us you can even join our telegram channel the link of which is given here as well as in the description of this particular video now an additional benefit which you can get by joining this telegram channel is that you can fetch the pdfs of all the discussions which we are doing on youtube through this particular telegram channel which is going to be very helpful for you in revision so thank you friends happy learning